So today I'm going to be talking about the Scopes Trial of 1925. It's one of the most famous trials in American history, and I'm going to be talking about it in the framework of the fundamentalist and modern, modernist Christian perspective. So as you can see this picture, the controversy in the Scopes trial was teaching evolution in biology class, well, human evolution. So what was the Scopes trial? So the Scopes trial took place in July of 1925. In 1925, the American Civil Liber Liberties Union set up a test case in Dayton, Ohio, wherein the substitute biology teacher, John Scopes, agreed to cooperate in a trial wherein the teaching of the biology of man in school was put on trial. Now, I remember in my own high school biology class learning about human evolution, and my I remember my biology teacher saying, I, I know some of you might have different beliefs about this, but I have to teach it. So it, it it proves the relevance of this case even in modern times. So notably, Scopes had never taught biology, and in fact he was a gym teacher, when he substituted in the class for two weeks. But for the trial, it was considered sufficient that the class's textbook, Hunter Civics, did discuss the evolution of man. However, there was a serious problem with the text discussion of evolution. So the text, when it talked about evolution, discussed how man was descended from a lower order creature in that there were five different groups of humans and some humans were lower in evolution than others, with white people being the highest state of evolution. Obviously, this had hugely racist ramifications and later would pave the way for movements like the eugenics movement, which the Nazis used as inspiration for mass genocide. Anyway, so the case also represented a bigger controversy on the American theological landscape of Christian fundamentalists and modernists. Modernists supported the idea that the theory of evolution could be consistent with religion, whereas fundamentalists believed that the word of God in the Bible took precedence over all human knowledge. So I'm going to talk about some of the key players in this in the Scopes case now. So William Jennings Bryan represented the fundamentalists and was Christian and argued that evolution should be thought, taught as a theory rather than as a fact in schools. So despite there being evidence pointing to the fact that humans have evolved over time, um, every scientific experiment is actually a theory and it's proven with evidence. That's why Brian said evolution should be taught as a theory. So like Darwin's theory of the birds um, evolving in the Galapagos Islands was proven with evidence, but also it was still a theory. In his autobiography, William Jennings Bryan argued that the point of the trial was to draw a line as to where taxpayers could have control over what could be taught in schools. So this issue is still hugely debated today and it's very relevant. So the question is, should religion influence what's taught in schools? And most people, and as a teacher, I can say that most schools teach the secular perspective. So Charles Darrow, on the other hand, represented Christian modernists. Darrow was an agnostic and famed lawyer. Now, agnostic means he didn't either he didn't confirm or deny the existence of God, argued for Christian modernists who believed that evolution being taught as a fact did not necessarily go against religion. In his autobiography, Darrow argued that his point of participating in the Scopes trial was to expose the program of men like Darrow and other fundamentalists in the country. So the outcome. So the outcome of the trial, so eventually the Butler Act, which is what had spurned the Scopes trial in the first place, was repealed in 1967 with the Epperson versus State of Arkansas case, and the, the idea of teaching evolution as a fact was permitted in all public schools across America. 
Part of the problem with teaching evolution as a fact rather than as a theory was that such ideas contributed racism and took away from the inherent dignity of the human person.